Hello everyone and welcome back to Torah Clicks, where I try to give you something worthwhile to click on. So you're catching me once again here in my kitchen and today I'm actually making some, um, I guess you would call it baked salmon for Shabbos. And I have two different recipes that I like to make over here. Some people like one, some people like the other, so we mix and match. On one side of the pan I just have over here some mayonnaise and I chopped up some fresh dill. I mixed some fresh dill in it and I'm just going to take that and I'm going to brush it liberally on top of the salmon. I think you can see what's going on over there. I hope you can. I'm going to brush that on just like so. Try to get it on everywhere. A nice coating. Want to get those calories all over the nice healthy fish. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is going to make this fish come out nice and moist and tasty. But then, on top of that, what I do is I have some fresh ground pepper that I'm going to put on there, black pepper. And I like to use either fresh ground or coarse ground pepper. I find that the coarse ground pepper has much more flavor, packs much more of a punch than the fine pepper. This over here is lemon pepper, and I find that the lemon in the lemon pepper brings out a very nice flavor in the fish, although I use it on lots of other things as well. I have some garlic salt that I'm going to put on there as well. And then the last touch is I have some nice chili powder. It's funny because now I have other people here in the background in the kitchen who are going to find out all my secrets, my little trade secrets over here. But I put a little chili powder on there, it gives it a little bit of a kick. Not too much, I don't like to make it too spicy. And here you can see what that side of the pan looks like. I hope you can see that. Now on the other side here, I have my own um, homemade makbucha, which I make myself. I hope you can see that there in the camera. It's basically uh, lots of tomatoes, onions, garlic, bell peppers. I've got red peppers, yellow peppers, green peppers, some jalapeno peppers and uh, I spice it up nicely, stew it for a nice long time, has a nice amount of flavor to it. And when I want something nice and quick and easy, I'll just take that matbucha and I'll spoon that over my salmon. I like to call that my Mediterranean style salmon. And all of those vegetables and all of those seasonings give it a very nice, very nice flavor, very nice kick. Let me just grab another spoon here because I stuck one spoon on the fish and I see I need a little bit more makbucha and I don't want to be putting the same spoon back inside. So we'll just spoon a little bit more over there. And then, because I want the fish to be a little bit more savory than the plain makbucha, I'm going to grind some fresh pepper onto that. Not going to put any chili powder on that, but I will put some lemon pepper there as well. Now, here you can see what this looks like. I've got my two different varieties in there in the pan. Got the nice matbucha covered salmon over there. The mayonnaise and spice covered salmon over there. And I'm putting this into an oven that's preheated at 435. That's going to go in there for about 20 minutes. Okay, now, of course you know that the name of this channel is Torah And it's not really a cooking channel. However, you know that whenever I'm busy getting ready for Shabbos, I always have the Parsha in mind. So this week we're coming into Parsha's Mishpatim. It's a very interesting thing. Parsha's Mishpatim begins over here with the Parsha of the Eved Ivri, a Yiddish servant. Now how did this Yid come to be sold by Bezdin as a servant? Rashi tells us that this Parsha is referring to somebody who stole and he doesn't have the funds to pay his victim back. He stole money, can't pay back, he's got to pay back. So what happens? Bezdin sells him as an Eved. They sell him as an Eved and they take the proceeds and with the proceeds they pay back the victim. And now the Pasuk says, Kisikna Eved Ivri, if you purchase this Eved Ivri, this Yiddish servant, Sheish Shanim Yavli. He's an Eved for six years. Now the first thing that it's just Kedai to realize over here is look at the severity of theft. The severity of theft is that Bezdin will sell you as an Eved if you can't pay back. So just, we should keep in mind how severe that is. But there's another thing that I'd like to point out. You know, last week we spoke about the Aseris Adibris. Parshas Yisrael, we have the Aseris Adibris. And it was always a little strange to me. The Torah Daisha goes from the Aseris Adibris to petty theft. 
And doesn't that strike you as a little bit strange? Would you think that the thing we're going to speak about right after Har Sinai is petty thievery? Wouldn't you think we could speak about something loftier than that? Maybe we should have gone straight from Parshish Yisrael to Parshish Truma. We'll speak about uh, Saras Adibris, and we'll go straight from there to HaKamas HaMishkan. We'll speak about building a Mishkan and bringing the Shechina into Klal Yisrael. Why do we go straight from Saras Adibris to petty theft? And I think that there's a very important lesson to be learned over here, and it really connects to the end of Parshish Yisrael. The last thing that we have in Parshish Yisrael, the Pasuk says that when you make a Mizbeach for the Rabbi Nishalaylam, the Pasuk says, V'loi sale b'malois al Mizbechi. You should not ascend up to the top of the Mizbeach using steps. Rather, we should have a ramp. And we know that in the Mishkan and in the Beis Hamikdash, that's the way the, the Mizbeach was built. The Mizbeach had a sloped ramp that went up to the top of the Mizbeach. No steps. Now, why? Why can't you have steps? The Pasuk says, Asher lo sigole er alav. Because you should not expose yourself on the Mizbeach. When you walk up steps, it's necessary for you to open up your legs more. You're taking a wider step to go up from one step to the other. And you, in a sense, even though of course the Kayan is dressed, but still in a sense he's exposing himself over the surface of the Mizbeach. And therefore the Pasuk says, don't do that. No steps. Have a ramp. On a ramp, you could take small, petite, little steps, and you don't have to expose yourself that way. That's the, the Pashat Pshat, the simple interpretation of the Pasuk. I think that there's another lesson here. You know, sometimes you have somebody who is inspired by something. Maybe he listens to a good schmooze. He hears a nice lecture from a Rav. Or he sees something. He hears a story. Something happens, and it inspires him. And he decides that he wants to grow. Now that's a wonderful thing. The desire for growth is a wonderful thing. But what if you have somebody who has been living the life, let's say, of a totally non-observant person? He maybe never, he didn't grow up in an observant home. And now he becomes inspired and he decides that he wants to be the God Ah, oh, that's beautiful. He wants to grow to be the greatest of the great. But what this fellow does is he says, what do I have to be the God Ladar? So he goes to the local Judaica store and he sees a picture of the Chavetz Chaim. So he goes and he buys himself a long black coat and he buys himself a nice rabbinical hat and he, he grows a beard and he walks around looking very timid and uh, very humble, you know. And, and he goes and he makes himself look like the God Ladar. Somebody comes over to him Somebody doesn't know him. Somebody looks, wow, look at this Chosh of Yid over there. You know, I have a Shaila. I don't know what to do. I'm not sure my Cholent, uh, it's Shabbos, and my Cholent, the flame went out. I want to know what can I do, what can't I do. Or it, it, it got moved off the black. I have a Shaila, no Shabbos. I'll go ask this very Chosh of a looking fellow. And you go over to him and say, on Shuldik, uh, uh, Rebbe, I have a Shaila in Hilcha Shabbos. You got a what? What was that? Uh, you got a Shiloh? I don't even know what that is. So, uh, look, what? What, what, what? What's going on here? You see, the mistake that this person made was that he tried to go up steps. When you go from one step to another, you make a very sudden, rapid change in height. First, you were on this plane, and now you're stepping up directly to this plane up here. But you didn't cover the ground in the middle. And you know what happens when you do that? The Pasuk says, Don't try to jump up steps. You know why? Because what you're going to do is, you're going to expose yourself. All you're going to do is expose your weaknesses. All you're going to do is look like a fool. That's not the way to grow. The way to grow is, if you're up to here, you have to grow from here to there. And you got to cover all the ground in the middle. First, you have to learn Aleph Beis. You have to learn Amunah Pshuta. You have to learn what it means to believe in God. You have to learn how to daven. You have to learn Chumash. You have to learn Rashi. You have to grow. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with taking time. You got to take the time that you need. But you have to identify your starting point, identify your goal, 
and you have to grow step by step from your baseline to your goal. Says the Torah HaKadosh over here. Yes, we just had a Seres Adibris. Very nice. We just had a Seres Adibris. What do you want to speak about now? You want to speak about the Mishkan? You want to speak about the Kachik Kachim? You want to speak about the Aron Kaidish? What if you're a Ganif? If you're a Ganif, you're not ready for the Kachik Kachim. If you're a Ganif, the first thing you have to do is you have to learn how not to be a Ganif. The first thing you have to learn is that there's such a thing as Evid Ivri. There's such a thing as understanding the severity of theft. You have to understand that when somebody steals, it's not just a question that he wants money. It's a question that he doesn't have a Muna. He thinks that he could get something that the Rabbani Shalom did not decree should be his. He thinks that he could go and he could chop something. The Rabbani Shalom didn't want him to have these $10,000. But he'll do a crooked business deal and he'll chop the $10,000 in a way that the Tarak Daisha says is prohibited. So he doesn't have basic amuna he doesn't have. You want to talk about the Mishkan? You want to talk about the Kachim Kachim? You're not up to there. First you got to start from where you are. If you're Aganev, the first thing you have to do is you have to go and you have to say, Rav, what should I do? I have a problem with Geneva. It's very hard for me. I need to learn how to avoid it. I need to learn how, when I do business, I have to be scrupulously honest in my business dealings. I need a schmooze. Talk to me about a Munapshuta. Talk to me about Parnasa. Talk to me about what it means when the Gemara says, Mezainaisa Shaladam Tzuvan Laimer Rosh Hashanah. I need to understand those things. Start from there and then grow. I think this is the lesson that we can take from the beginning of Parshas Mishpatim over here. I hope you enjoy this. If you do, please, I would ask you, give a little click on that subscribe button. If you give a little click on the other bell symbol over there, you'll get a notification when I post something new, and you could be from the first ones to see it. I hope you enjoy these videos. I hope you enjoy the recipes as well. I hope you enjoy preparing for Shabbos together with me. Enjoy. Everybody have a wonderful day. Be well.